Did You Have To is a proud member of the But Why Though podcast community. Hey everyone, welcome back to Did You Have To, a podcast where it's just two bad bitches talking about anime. As always, I'm Kate. And I'm Nisha. And today we are going to be reviewing the latest My Hero Academia movie, My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. Yay! I'm so excited. I, I've been wanting uh, to talk about this since I finished watching it. Yes, me too. Literally, actually, I sent you a picture of me crying. Because mm-hmm. as soon as it was over, because <laughs> my emotions were everywhere. Oh, yeah. And I just, oh. I was inconsolable and like, I'm mm-hmm. actually really ready to watch it again because I'm like, I feel, so I feel like this is going to be one that really hits with the fan base like real hard. And yes. I think that it's going to, I think that it's going to necessitate watching it a couple of times. So. 100% agree. Just like, it's so weird because this is only the second one in the, of the movies, but this one just hit so differently from the last one and yeah oh we will get into it y'all we just we have so many feelings and emotions Mm -hmm. Uh. so but this is where we say i know that it is in limited theaters and you may not Mm -hmm. have seen it yet and your dvd isn't coming in for a bit this is gonna have spoilers (laughs) yes yes i am we do i don't feel bad at all for any of the spoilers we're spilling in here so yeah, and I think it's hard because I feel like talking about Heroes Rising, it's a disservice to not include the spoilers right. because of how much heavy lifting this mm-hmm. film does for the lore of My Hero Academia and really yes. for being, like, defining the series. Like, everything mm-hmm. that has ever existed in this series is culminated in this one movie. And yes. I. I do think that if you have not seen it yet, I really want you to get involved in the conversation. So maybe put this episode, put a pin in this episode and come back to it when you get a chance. Yep. We'll be here. Mm-hmm. Y- y'all can pause it. This is probably going to be one of the one times I will not be mad for people not listening to our shows. Oh, <laughs> Just, yeah. I forgive you. Oh, yeah. And uh, you made a, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was saying you made a really good point. Like, this movie is impossible to talk about without giving spoilers just because of, like, how deep we want to go into it. And we will be doing our audience a disservice, too, by not talking about the spoilers. Mm -hmm. So, you're welcome. (laughs) You're welcome for our opinions. Yes, you are. (laughs) But we appreciate you listeners also, so... Um, but yeah, so we can get right into it. Um, so if you don't know, essentially, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of this is just from the My Hero Academia fandom wiki because I really had nowhere else to go because all the other synopses were like a sentence. This was the most yeah. fleshed out. <laughs> So, a must-see, full of passion. In this movie, Izuku Midoriya, Katsuki, Bakugo, Achoku, uh, Achako, your Uraraka, Shota Todoroki, and all the members of Class 1A will make appearances. Even though All Might was admired by many all around the world, it was with a sad heart that he had to give up his role as the symbol of peace. Because of this, a dark force who has been moving behind the scenes, a villain named Nine, can be considered the greatest villain, who can be considered the great, greatest villain thus far. Um, going in a little bit to more detail, I really wish I could have found something that had a more detailed synopsis, but Mm -hmm. essentially, um, as you know, the My Hero Academia universe has wonderful, wonderful parent and role models who actually care about the children. So in order to make sure that those very caring adults aren't getting in the way of our children's stories, the children have taken part in UA's uh it's like a it's like a training program almost like all of them get to be heroes for a summer pretty much Um, yeah like they're running a hero agency it's like a summer internship it sounds like yes exactly phrased it and Mm. it's all on one small island and that small island is an island that doesn't have villains rarely has any crime like they're running around finding cats and making Mm -hmm. more ice for a concession stand but they're getting uh experience doing it that way Mm mm-hmm um, and so from there, you end up with the villain named Nine, 
who is out erasing people's powers. And Mm -hmm. they make a reference to season four and overhaul, um, specifically how they developed that quirk erasing bullet thing. Right. They reference that. And then we find out that nine is actually able to take, he's like a, he, it's a, what is it? All for one. one. Yes. He's Mm -hmm. like a, a dumbed down all for one. If we're being honest. And he even has similar designs to All for One, where like the thing around his mouth, um, it's I think it calls back to All for One's character yep. design. So it's just like when you see him, it's kind of just like it's like this could have been All for One's predecessor, like had he not picked, um, what's his name, the guy with the hands, hands guy, face. hands guy. <laughs> just I'm not gonna lie, I only know the hot villain name, so I know Dobby Toga right. and Overhaul. Which is like, so like when I read the manga, I'm like, oh, I know every, Shigaraki, thank you. That was going to bother me. I had to pull it up. Um, we're just, yeah, we're Shigar- just, we're just fake anime fans, Nisha. It's okay. We only like anime because men like anime. Yep. <laughs> God. <laughs> <sighs> that gave somebody validation and you know it. Oh, it really <laughs> did. <laughs> oh, they wish. But yeah, so I kind of like got that idea from him. It's like, you know what? This could have totally been like his number two choice had he not chosen Shigaraki to be his like predecessor. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just thought like, as I was watching, I'm like, I don't see why you didn't pick this man to be your number one. But okay, I'm not rooting for y'all anyways. I think, well, I think it's because I think at least for that, what it has to do is because nine ends up being able to get one for all's power. I always get them mixed up. All for one's All power for one. mm-hmm. by going through like genetic altering tests that allows all mm-hmm. for one's quirk to be put in him. And right. I think that that like one of the reasons why he isn't is because all for one, as much as he's like training Shigaraki to tra- take over like the villain business and everything all for one is still very obsessed with himself having all of that power. Like it's, it's the True. invert of you know, all my and Deku. Um, mm. And so I think with nine, you have a guy who's coming up and directly wants to be all for one. And so that's why he mm. puts his body through that. And he has like some dope powers though. Like it was it like those wind tunnel things, giant dragons that come out of his body. <laughs> summons lightning i don't know what was up with them dragons come out of his body i was trying to understand like are you controlling ice is yeah ice? i couldn't or figure out what just, it was like what is this power you can just make illusions be real and hurt people or is it ice i just couldn't like the, for, for the life of me i was trying to figure it out but you know what there are so many different kind of quirks out there i'm just yeah. always impressed that is like my biggest thing that i'm always impressed with about this show is like they literally come up with a quirk for everything and then they still come up with more superpowers so oh yeah yeah and so essentially he he can he his name is nine because he can have up to nine powers in his body at Mm. one time but the catch to this is that he it it it, uh, deteriorates his cells so the mm-hmm. more he uses the power, the more weaker he gets and the closer he gets to dying. And so he is ultimately trying to get and take the power of uh, of cell regeneration or mm-hmm. cell cell activation. That's what it's called. Yeah. Also, these quirks have nonsense names that have like don't very well tell you what things are. No, because cell activation, I immediately Googled it. And I was just like, Am I, I just need to understand what does that do? Mm-hmm. just like just because like i haven't been in school in forever and i was just trying to make sure that we learned about cell activation in biology or is this just like what they call it to just because you know pseudoscience name yeah so yeah um and so his quest for that is so that he can stably have all of the powers and mm-hmm. then that leads him to the island where our precious little babies are. Mm-hmm. Just and living, living their best lives and helping people. I know. Live like the bestest of lives. Like mm. they're just getting on great. Deku and, and Bakugo are having a friendship. Like a I legitimate know. friendship. Talking to each other without someone 
Bakugo, mm-hmm. saying die, Deku. Hey, like, hey, he left that shit in season three. He did leave that shit in season three. You know what we call that? Growth. <laughs> I did the hand motion too. Yes, I did. <laughs> Oh, we need to find someone has to edit this. Please do it and post it on our Twitter. But find the gift. It's from season two of Insecure, and you find her and you she says growth. But please, can you put like I want to see All Might's face on? Her oh body. my god, that would be such a good edit. I just feel like that, and then growth. I'm just I will come on. I'm gonna use somebody. that. For every episode that comes out with my baby. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh, I'm um, sorry, not to get distracted. <laughs> yeah, no, but but it's really cool because, like, this is, this is just a really awesome time because you see the entire 1A class just thriving. Like, mm-hmm. they're not doing anything big, but they're utilizing their powers. You get to see all of them. Like, I'm not even joking. All of them. Like right. Mineta, Asui, Todoroki, Ida, mm-hmm. Uraraka, Kirishima, Yairozu, Tokiyami, Kaminari, Oyama. I'm forgetting other ones, but I'm proud of myself for remembering those. You did good. Mina. <laughs> yes. I like Mina. She Mina. Uh, like everybody. Everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's something that you don't get. I mean, and you don't get it in my hero that much you know they have their controlled right. class they have they have their controlled cast so you jump between them which is why we're only just now seeing uh bakugo and todoroki returning to kind mm-hmm. of like the center of the story now in season four and episode 79 and 80 um right. and so to get to to get to see them all interacting with each other and using their quirks it's just refreshing because I think that this is a movie that has a little bit of shine for every single one of them, mm-hmm. um, which we'll talk about. Um, yes. But yeah, so they're just living their best life. And then Nine comes in yep. with his villains and blows it all up. Literally. They literally set fire to almost the entire island and you have... You have the kids, which I think is a really interesting concept because in Shonen, it's very much the opposite. Like the kids are always alone. They always know what to do alone because they're always alone. But Mm -hmm. in this case, kind of like in, what was the the name of the other movie? Two Heroes? Two Heroes. Two Heroes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're having the kids having to figure out everything by themselves Mm -hmm. and they can't even factor in aizawa coming they can't even factor in right. all might coming because like as much as like the uh the overhaul arc in season four where they're doing a lot of work and they're thinking the plan through they are still dependent on these top heroes coming in and lending them help um mm-hmm. and not necessarily lending them help but giving them answers and right they look to them for direction i mean like i think that's an important thing like to reference with um within two heroes Mm-hmm. It was only because they didn't get stuck in the room yeah. and get captured with everyone else. And then that forced them to have to think on their own. And that was before they had any training in the field. Like, this is before they yeah. had the, their provisional licenses. So then, like, you're, it's still impressive, like, they were able to do all of that without, like, having that experience. But then with this one, this takes place after the overhaul arc. Mm-hmm. And everyone has their license, and now they're all getting, like, real-life experience, and now they at least know that, like, okay, we really can't count on somebody coming to help give us backup. We just need, like, they're making plans and trying to do things and hold out, but it's just, like, even, like, Mineta came Mineta- up with a strategy. Girl, I was like, Mineta? I know you. You? You're being like- serious right now and giving directions? You oh. little pervert? I'm like, I guess, I guess, I guess a little pervert can, you know, give direction. Also, Just, I will say, I was happy to see Mineta's quirk actually used in an effective way. Because I, yes. cause that quirk is bullshit <laughs> and we all know it. And he does I, not I, belong in a I, 1A. It was this, yes, I believe, I agree with this. And the only thing I said about this, because I saw the meme on Twitter, someone had did like, it was like Mineta and then two other characters in Hercule. And it's like. Who could, like, characters that 
you like everybody else can beat their ass, but you can't beat their ass. And I definitely said like I could beat Hercules' ass. But anyways, <laughs> my point is Manetta was there, and I'm like honestly, Manetta knows how to apply his quirk in situations that he may not be able to fight you hands hand to hand. Like he can't get close to you. Like he can't get close to anybody. But yeah. the boy does know how to apply his quirk to suit his situation. Exactly. I will give him that. He he. You know what he is. He. I'm actually well. I guess support class doesn't necessarily have weapons, but like he'll, he'll right. or doesn't have great, great quirks, but like mm-hmm. he's a good sidekick. Like he can yeah. work his quirk to work with somebody else's. And he mm-hmm. does take that direction. That's a I good agree. point. He, he's a pervert, but he's a pervert and he annoys me. And he's the one I like the absolute least. Like if he could get expelled, that'd be great. <laughs> but he at least can be useful in some situations and he can sometimes be act- like this if anything this movie showed me like look at you actually being serious i know and, and not running away so yeah and i think that, that, that that's one of the really cool things because as the as the villains come in you have them having to confront what mm-hmm. their individual powers are and having to learn how to not only like do use them to they essentially charge up their ultimates and like how they can do that, but they have to learn how to work together and who mm-hmm. fits where. And what I really liked about it is you have as they're fighting off the villains because they get their asses whooped the first time. We got to say that yeah. their asses get handed to them yeah. the first time, and then they yeah. end up forming a retreat and taking all of the all of the inhabitants of the island to hide them away um they get whooped like Mm -hmm. it's crazy and then you have them come back and when they come back for this final piece they're exhausted like Mm -hmm. these kids it made me just really appreciate how well my hero academia does it with always presenting them as children like i never feel like they're adults Ever, yep. even when they're even Ida, even when Ida is being <laughs> Ida, I never once feel that there. There's always some doubt. Yeah, and it, it's something that you see happen when they fight for for the final battle, and they're mm-hmm. all pulling off their their ultimate moves, and and you get to see even the useless powers like Belly Button Man. Um, I forget his name. Ayama? Is that Ayama? I, Ayama, yeah. Yeah. He, he's using it. Like, and yeah. he and he's doing work. And and you have these kids who are very real kids pushing themselves past any limit that they had. Mm-hmm. Like Uraraka's throwing up nonstop because she just keeps going. And yeah. Momo has literally used all of her lipids. Mm-hmm. Which that one got me. It's just like Momo is like actually will pass out. Like, yeah, she she's doing serious damage. To, like her and Kaminari, like their quirks, and even to some extent, like Be- uh, Ayama and o- Ochaka, like their their quirks take a true toll on their bodies internally. Yeah. Like like Ochaka, she gets like nauseous, but like it can still like be a huge thing that to her power. Mm-hmm. Where it's like if she's constantly using it. She can make herself very, very ill. Yeah. But then you have, like, Momo, and she's creating things. So, like, when she's not even in the battle, she's creating supplies to help people. And then she's, like, running herself ragged, uh-huh. doing all of that. And I was just like, shoot, that's right. Like, she's, like, using everything she's got. And, like, people will, oh, like, I just remember when people would call Momo useless. And I just want to say, like, I never doubted my girl. <laughs> I always have faith in her. She's always been one of my favorites. She's never been useless. She's just a teenage girl who doubted herself. But when mm-hmm. you see her in this movie, she is sure. She is confident. Almost she like that exam that she had with Aizawa and he believed in her. And you know what we call that? Growth. Growth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Growth. Because what does my hero academia give us? Character development. Consistency. Mm-hmm. It builds upon itself, and then we get to see it happen in the movie and in the series. I feel like I'm giving a sermon right now. I'm going to sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, just, I feel the spirit. No, Sorry. I mean, it's like, shit. 
I, I'm with you because I would also like to point out Kaminari. Kam- mm-hmm. Kaminari gets some shine too. Yeah. Like him is, it, it is something that we don't realize because when it comes to body breaking quirks, like we just think mm-hmm. of Deku. Right. But when you look at these other people, like Momo is literally using her body to create matter. Yes. <laughs> like she only has so much. Kaminari can fry his literal brain if he pushes his powers too much. Mm-hmm. And you have both of them, and, and as well as, you know, the other ones, just going past these limits. And right, my heart just was so happy when all of them got to say plus ultra in their own ways. Yes, and they're just like, go beyond plus ultra. I'm just like, I'm so proud of these kids. God I know. Dang it. None of you are, like, real, but you're real in my heart. All, just, I have adopted uh, all of you. And you are my children. Let me get my tax write-offs. <laughs> you and Matt gonna claim all these I'm gonna children. claim all of 1A. I know you will. I know you will. I'm just like, I'm nobody's mama. I'm everybody's auntie. That's, yeah, that's what I've fine. claimed. I'm everybody's auntie, godmom. I'm Bakugo's godmom because he's your son. Uh, I just, I can't deal. But no, it's just like, and I, I love that that's like, it's something that, like, a lot of people, like, we say plus ultra and everything, but, like, it, like to see them use it in action yeah. in the movie and, like, how they truly, like, embody it. And it's, like, it's like their school cry or, like, almost like a fight song. Yeah. But, like, they, it's, so, it's so much pride in it and how they push themselves to go beyond and, like, that is just so beautiful to see. And then, like, but, like, going back to your point about, like, never doubting them as children, like... I feel that too. And it's like one of those things where like, I could only see these characters as children right now, but it's like, you can also see them as they grow Yeah. from like when we were first all introduced to them as a class and everything. And I'm yeah. always impressed with how my hero does a great job of giving us attention to so many characters. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I think it's one of the best things they do is like we all people have a connection with different characters and they like them and like I think it's a credit to how much you know time they give us with these characters and how they show them interacting and everything yeah I mean and I think that I I think especially this movie I think I think heroes rising really shows how much my hero has taken that Naruto formula which is like yeah. we're going to have a large cast and there are a whole bunch of people, but they've pushed past that because I know almost all of 1A's names. Right. I know Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto. That's what I know from Naruto. <laughs> Maybe right. Hinata and Rock Lee. But like they were never really sustained in the same way. And whereas I think mm-hmm. if you have 1A and you have you just have their pictures – you can go through and you can start naming them. And and they oh, each yeah. have individual characteristics that make them still stand out in the story because and and that's one of the beautiful things is as much as it's Deku's story, mm-hmm. everybody also has moments of growth. Maybe not in the same yes. way, but they all have those moments of growth. And I think what Heroes Rising does is it gives us time to see these kids. It's kind of like a coming of age movie almost for yeah. For how all of them get to use, you know, their power at like the largest forms. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it was really nice to watch them kind of like find that power in themselves. But I think what the with the use of Pul- plus ultra did for me watching it was it was it was verifying everything fans have said that the series is. And it was showing that even though All Might is no longer the symbol of peace. Right. His teachings and these kids are still able to go beyond and they're still able to push. And so even because the biggest fear in my hero is that with All Might gone, Mm -hmm. everything is gone. And, And that's something that is referred to throughout the season. I mean, season four, we're currently get that with it with Endeavor having to be the number one hero, which like, oh, mm-hmm. I hate Endeavor so much. I still know, Nisha, you'd be all over that. But I'm OK. Don't don't put me out there like that. Don't be putting me on blast. <laughs> we need to, be, to be specific, I do not. I'm not attracted to this man because 
I don't approve of his child rearing or how he treated his wife or anything. I just think he's attractive, but he is also an asshole. But I do like a man with big meaty thighs <laughs> and broad shoulders. <laughs> but you don't, 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 big, <laughs> don't big meaty thighs, saying, broad shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> don't put me on blast. Like I can say he's attractive, but I can also say he's an asshole, so I can restrain myself. Just <laughs> that's fine. I had to, I have to mention your tall and broad men at least once. I know. I know every episode. <laughs> every episode it's fine it's fine I it's, ju- okay. I just don't want people- it's okay because guess what i'm attracted as hell to nine he has that white hair <laughs> he loses his shirt he's ripped it's fine this is why we're friends this is why we're best friends <laughs> this is exactly it. we enable one another i um, mean if you if you have not had the hots for at least one genocidal or homicidal character in anime are you really a weeb are you really doing anime right? I mean, come on. Just, they make the meanest of villains the hottest for a reason. But I digress. True. And just <laughs> one more thing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I have faith that, you know, sometimes they can come back around. Look at Vegeta. Mm-hmm. Just, just saying. So sometimes they can become an antihero. Or they can turn around, turn their whole lives around. But, you know. Huh. Sorry. We digress. <laughs> <laughs> um... All of that being said, I, I think that for fans of of my hero, they're going to be excited to see this. Um, they're mm-hmm. going to be excited to get to experience all the characters. Um, what was what was your favorite? Okay, we and we we have I, we have specifically not talking not not spoken about Bakugo and Deku yet because they're going to get their own little thing because yes. they have to. Um, yep. But outside of Bakugo and Deku. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite like um, special move, like the big move that that you know that oh. that happened? Oh, okay. So I have to give it to Shoto Todoroki. Yeah, because so I was in this movie. I was like, Todoroki is much more powerful than they're showing him, like in the fights that he was in, mm-hmm. like originally. But then they do do a good job of explaining like Todoroki can't go all out because there are people around him and he's fighting in a team. So, yeah. obviously, he can't nuke the entire place and take out the bad guy, which that's something he could have tried to do, but, like, he finds out that he's not hot enough or he's not, like, he, he his power set doesn't, like, his when he's using fire, it's not working well against the, what, what's his name, Chimera. Yeah. That villain. So. The wolf with dreads? The wolf with dreads, which I have questions. <laughs> Why does the wolf have dreads? But apparently, the dreads are snakes. Because he's a chimera. But, you know, <laughs> what is your quirk, sir? Or did somebody make you? That I got was my dreads first question. And I'm a wolf. I just, he's a chimera. And I was just They're like, okay. straight dreads, though. Like, it's it's dreads. dreads. <laughs> it's dreads. And all I can think about is somebody's like, okay, his name's Chimera. And what does his hair look like? And when he's a wolf, I'm like, first of all, every chimera I've seen is a lion. But you know, I I'm mean, not being. I know a certain chimera that was a dog. Okay, we're not going down that path today. <laughs> <laughs> not today. But yes, that is also a chimera. I know, like, the definition of chimeras can be just like a different combination of animals, either a boy, a girl, and a dog. But oh, my sweet baby. Um, anywho, I think that was like, that just threw me off at first when I realized this thing has dreads. Why does he have dreads? Are they? And then I realized it's supposed to be designed like snakes, because I think they kept moving. I never they're... once saw them as snakes. Like, so I looked up his picture <laughs> in the My Hero Wiki. Okay, that shit snakes. But it is. You know, it, it, it don't look like dreads. Like, yeah, this dreads. I was they like, dreads. why does this wolf man have dreads? I don't know. I don't know. I was just kind of thinking. I'm like, so were you black? <laughs> not gonna lie like part of me wanted to text you say so is chimera gonna be on your my favorite uh black anime characters list i don't even want to claim him i don't even want to claim him no you know what no i'm not i'm not usually and i've claimed piccolo but i'm not claiming him we don't we don't know that man oh. i don't know him i just i just oh. <laughs> that His was just character so design needed work just a little bit but <laughs> I was just, like, so thrown off every time they kept on going back. I'm like, y'all could have just not given him dreads. Like, I get that they snakes, but you could have just, like, not... And I guess he cut off the snakes' heads. I, I don't know. I think that's what happened. Yeah. I don't know. 
I really don't know. It was just a very interesting character. They tried to make him look very menacing, but you gave him a dread ponytail. And then he turns into a kaiju. <laughs> yeah. A giant kaiju chimera. But, yeah. So th- when he does that in the fight, and uh, Todoroki comes up with the, like, he realizes, like, okay, so I can't beat him with heat, but I can beat him with ice. So he literally, they do this, they all work together, like how Ida and Sui and, oh, there was just like so many people that work together in order to do this, but like, basically, they get it so Todoroki can get closer to him, sticks his hand in his mouth, and freezes him from the inside out. It's and I was so just good. like, and he's just like, because he's applying what his father taught him of like, <clears throat> How to boot, like, basically in reverse, like, push, telling him to push his temperature as far as it can go. But he applies it to, like, his mother's power that he has from her to the ice and just, like, realizes, like, we can't hurt him externally, but I can freeze him from the inside. And I thought that was really dope. I think that was, like, one of the, a very, very good move. And then, sorry, I have to add one more. It's Ochaka's move. Yeah. With, um... Because it calls back to the school festival fight with Bakugo. Yes! It's so I, good! Such a good move. And it's just, like... I'm just so proud of how far she's come. Like, she was already... I, like, I've always liked that moment with her and Bakugo. Because, one, he didn't go... He didn't pull punches on her because he respected her as a fighter. And uh-huh. he saw her as a threat. Uh-huh. But... Exactly. I know you know this. Um, but it's also that she's just, she knows how to apply her power. And like, just seeing her do that again, it just like, it gave me flashbacks. Of, like, she just used the same move that she was on yeah. Bakugo. And just like knowing how she can improve it. It is just like, ugh. I'm so proud of my babies. Sorry. I hope I didn't steal any of your favorite moments. <clears throat> Yeah, I think, and that I'm thinking, because, like, I, I didn't even think about her move being that way, but mm-hmm. it totally is. And, like, the amount of control that she has to put into things yep, to do that, it's insane. Like, it, it, it just, the amount of awareness, that situational awareness and coordination that she has for everything to go the way it does, like, I think that, that that's amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. I really, really liked, um, I love Todoroki as well, but I liked the fight with, oh my gosh, what's, forget which villain it was, but it was the one where. The hair? Yes. No, 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 not the hair. Slice. Oh, okay. But that was her name. The one with the hair. Oh, yes, it was Slice. Yes, 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 it was. It was Slice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was really, really good because, um, and it's funny because I really like this one, but I like it and technically he doesn't win against her. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Tokuyama, right? That's his name? Yeah, Tokuyama. Tokuyama. Tokoyami. Tokoyami. Oh, right. Yeah, Tokoyami is fighting her, and we get to see him actually let loose his Mm -hmm. demon, which we don't really see. But what I really liked about it, he had claws. He had, like, these, like, bear claw-looking things. Right. I was like, what? When did he get blades? When did Shadow (laughs) get blades? What is happening? I love this. But... (laughs) What I really liked about it, specifically with his character, because in the past, in the villain arc, um, when Bakugo gets uh, gets kidnapped, one of the reasons that they're struggling is because Tokiyami's shadow has taken up so much darkness that he can't control it. Mm-hmm. And so, since that point, and really for his whole his whole tenure in 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 UA, he's focusing on how to channel. And how to make that stronger while still controlling mm-hmm. it. And I think getting to see it in action against Slice, it was a right. moment was like, oh my god, you've really done it. Like, you mm-hmm. have really... God damn it. <laughs> Leia? <laughs> okay. Okay. Like, he's really put in the work. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm getting to see him do something that isn't just kind of like something in the background and everything like that. 
So I right. really liked his. Um, I also really liked the combo fights with Kirishima and um, yeah. I forgot the other person's name. Kirishima. Who was he fighting with? He was the one where they coated their hands in Froppy's. Oh, yes. That was, yeah, that was with the one I was talking about. That was um with Todoroki. There we go. That, yeah, the... that, that, that was the same one. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. the same one. But no, I just really liked, <clears throat> I just really liked working Froppy into it because. Yeah. She is best girl, but she don't ever get to do anything because she's just True. a frog. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, no, and like that's so dope because I remember like they've talked about her ability to create toxin, like yeah, um, toxins. But it's not really she doesn't like to use it a lot, or I just don't think she is given the opportunity to use it a lot. Mm-hmm. But I think that is a powerful ass quirk. Yeah, like she's able to create a neurotoxin that can like make people stop moving. But she also knows she can't, she probably knows that she can't use it, like, you know, all willy nilly, because then she could probably really kill someone. Oh, if yeah. If she used it too much. But I think that is just, like, one of the the best, she has one of the best quirks, where, like, in how she applies everything. Because I think it's kind of like how people look at the girl, ugh. I think every, this can go to everyone. Sometimes people just look at the quirks and they don't see how they can be applied. Yeah. And they probably think they can only do one thing. Like, they could probably look at Froppy and be like, oh, you're just a frog. So what can you do? Like, what does uh-huh. that mean? But like, Fropp- Froppy be coming in saving people. Mm-hmm. Like, she saves people at the last minute a lot. So <laughs> they need to res- put some respect on our girl's name. Uh-huh. 100%. Yup. Um... But yeah, so I think I think that kind of like rounds out like the 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 tops, and then yeah. just like watching them do that. And, and and I will say when you watch this, and if you watch this, please add us and let us know who your favorite was from the one yeah. A class scene scene fight. Um, because they all got to do so much. Like I I don't think there's ever been a moment where all of them have been given this much attention before. Mm-hmm. And so I really really appreciate it. Yes, um, and I think oh sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think that's really tr- like, like when we watched the first one. So if you remember in like two heroes, it's obviously like the, how they set up the movie. Like you're given your like cast for the movie, so the entire ca- class isn't there. You see like cameos of them, but they're not all in action. But I liked how, and it, and that's because like how each one plays a role in the plot and like everything in the mission. But I really liked them doing it this way in this movie like how we got to see everyone and honestly when you think about it sometimes it's hard to work everybody into the movie like yeah. at least i would i would think it's hard to give everyone their moments to shine and like you like oh maybe you don't see this character in act, action as much like no you really see every character to some extent show like show out and like have their moment and just like i think that's really cool that we get to see the entire ca- class showcase themselves yeah. Like, even Mina, which, sorry, I forgot. That was the other fight that I really liked. Because that's the one with um, Tokiyami. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to have to start saying their superhero their hero names. I can't. <laughs> I, it's too hard. But it's just, like, she, her fight with, like, because her thing is, like, acid um, and everything. But, like, she has such great moves. And she's so dope. And she's, like, just... Ah, she's like another one of my favorites, and I think that she shows out. And these kids are like fighting in life, life or death battles. Yeah, like I think that's something important. Like they know they could die, but like the way they face on and work together, oh, it just it, it touches my heart. No, I love it, and I can't, I can't wait. I, I just, I can't wait for people to start talking about this. Yes, yes, like, please, I people. just, I just, I just need it. Yes, y'all hit us up immediately. <laughs> like, as soon as you leave the movie theaters, please hit our line on <laughs> Did You Have To on Twitter. Let us know who your favorites are so we can have other people to talk about this with, too. I mean, exactly. I love Kate. Exactly. <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to run each other ragged talking about it. Oh, yeah. That we love. Well, that and, like, well, the hard thing is, too, is we're just, like, I want to talk about all these things, but then, like, mm-hmm. we also got to do it on the show and then, like, also balancing everything else because, like, I have been wanting to talk about my hero stuff because I've, I've finally caught up on everything mm-hmm. for season four. But I'm like, oh, no, what if I accidentally talk about Heroes Rising? I guess I'm not going to talk about my hero stuff. So I'm just nope. posting like my hero gifts because I didn't want to break embargo. 
Yep, that is right. We keep our mouths shut because exactly. we can be trusted. That and we, we have been noticed. waiting. And more so than anything, we have been waiting to talk about the baby boys that my hero is all based on. Deku Let's and Bakugo. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so Deku and Bakugo team up. Yep. To fight nine because they're they're two of the strongest. Um, and they get their asses whooped the first time. Mm-hmm. And it hurt to watch. I don't know how you were, but they're going all out and they're actually working as a team. And I mean, they're they're still <clears throat> working independently, but they're 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 working together because Deku is Deku is fighting, and then he's about to pretty much lose his quirk, and Bakugo comes out of nowhere and yep. saves him. Yep. And it, it's a moment where I'm like, yes, oh my god, yes. Mm-hmm. Um. And it was just amazing to see. And you think you're going to get this triumphant moment. And they're both like near death at the end of it. Yep. Because uh, essentially the the quirk, the cell activation quirk is a little boy's quirk. And so right. they're doing whatever they can to protect these kids. And Bakugo was even like, Bakugo was mean to those kids, but they deserved it. That little girl is That little girl dick. is annoying. I hate her. Fuck that kid. I don't, and I still don't understand her whole issue with like heroes. The, like I just feel like, I mean, I get that she just feels like not all heroes are great, or maybe it's just more like she's just scared about her brother becoming a hero. Yeah. Um. That seems that it's probably more so that that she's scared that her brother admires heroes and she's trying to show him that all heroes aren't great or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Which loving big sister, I know, cool. Um. But yeah, <laughs> he deserved to be mean to them children. Oh yeah. Um, um, but it was a moment that happens halfway through the film and it just, it, it was like a gut punch. Mm-hmm. Like all the other kids have lost, but it's like, okay, well, if they lost, that's fine. These two are still going to win. And then right. they, they don't and mm-hmm. they're near death. And it's like the first time that like all hope is kind of gone. Yeah, because uh, like even before they start planning the final fights, they're dejected, they're sad, they're scared, mm-hmm. and it's the realization of it all too. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. No, I mean you're right. It's a realization that like they are just kids, and mm-hmm. they're trying. And it's not only that they're kids, but like they have to step up and save people. Like, if mm-hmm. there is nobody else here, there's no way to, for them to get off the island. Nobody right. knows that they're there because all communication is down. And mm-hmm. they just have to essentially step up and put away their fear. And mm-hmm. they have to smile. Which is right. such, like, the hardest thing. Because uh, cause the, 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 the movie is filled with, like, um like uh scenes of all might like switching mm-hmm. back and forth of like lessons that he's taught the kids as Deku yeah. and Bakugo specifically and you get to see the power in the kids and the power in Deku of ba- uh, the power of the kids mainly of seeing them smile through it to protect people yes and it hits really hard and then the little boy comes and he saves them and he repairs them. He because like the healers mm-hmm. that they had, they could only heal them to a certain point, right? And because it's like all their internal injuries were still damaged. Like they could he- they close they were able to close their wounds, um, yeah. But they weren't able to do anything about the internal damage. Yeah, and it was and it's really sad and this little boy just comes out of nowhere just like really inspired by watching them and it was it was a great moment because like these kids were inspired not just by watching Bakugo but like or uh, Deku but like as a Bakugo fan like they were Mm -hmm. also inspired of watching Bakugo and like Mm -hmm. Bakugo doesn't get those moments and so true for me watching that it was a moment of seeing how much Bakugo can be a hero i mean we always know that he was he was never going to be a villain he was always going to be a hero but like it was the first time that we get to see him and how other people see him and in a way that isn't bad like no they're not the people (laughs) booing him at the sports festival 
they're mm-hmm. just two kids that are trusting in these in these two heroes that saved them. And so for me, getting to see them on equal footing, being admired was was amazing. Right. No, I agree because it's like it's why I loved that Best Genus. I feel like Best Genus saw the potential in Bakugo. Yeah. For the jump and that, and he just wanted to, and he and I still believe that Best Genus taught Bakugo a lot, and it stuck, and it actually stuck with Bakugo. Um, but it's like one of those moments where it's like, we've all seen potential in him. Like, yes, a lot of people thought he was just going to, I feel like there were people who really thought he was going to turn into a villain, but he's not. Yeah, He's just, he has a different, Deku is all about saving people. Like, that's his main reason for being a hero. Bakugo's is, like, he'll still save people, but he thinks that he just wants to be the best and strongest hero. Yeah. But those are two things, like you said, those are the two big things they both took away from All Might. Like, Bakugo has always admired All Might because he's always wins. He always beats the bad guy. And Deku admires him because he always saves the day. And I think mm-hmm. that's, it's just, they, they admire this character for the same reasons, but like also they take took away two different things from them. So, and Bakugo is a hero. And I think it was sweet that they made sure to include that like the little boy saw Bakugo as a hero too and he acknowledges him as a hero it's like that moment where Deku saves um the kid with the T-Rex hat not T-Rex but that Triceratops hat like for the first time and that like that reminds Deku of like if I can't save this kid in front of me I can't call myself a hero and Bakugo he is a hero he jumps into action he saves those kids he worries about their safety and he and makes sure they're safe and then he goes into fight and I think that's just like so great to see um, but I, just, I wanted to say, like, to add in the moment where, like, before they, like, are at their wits. And it's just, like, it's crazy because, like, in that moment, I really thought, like, oh, shit, this could have been it. Like, I thought he might have taken, like, I mean, we find out. Can I say why? Wait, we said there's spoilers. And it was the reasons yeah. why the bad, why nine couldn't take Deku's power is because, like you said, he can only hold up to nine quirks. And we found out that Deku, well, we for people who know how All for One works, and they even explain this in exposition at the beginning of the movie, Deku has more than one quirk inside of his body. He just hasn't found out how to manifest all of them. Yeah. But uh, not getting into all that, that's for another episode. <laughs> but, uh, and that's, it's just like, and it's out of pure luck that at that moment, Nine starts to break down and he's unable to like do a finishing blow on them. Yep. And it's just like, it's complete luck. So it's just like, in that moment, I was like, whew, I was kind of worried there. Even though this is a movie, and it's not in the series. <laughs> I, I was, was like, huh? so worried. I'm like, I'm a little worried about my babies. I need to make sure they're okay. <laughs> so, like, that whole moment, and then, like, them being saved, it was just like, yeah. Because, like, it's kind of like, the stakes are so high. Like, you really feel it. Like, they talk about how Momo was able to send a drone out and get a message out and everything, but now they're all just focused on, like, we just need to make it to the next six hours. We got to survive. And then you kind of worry, like, shoot, if these kids don't survive, like, that's it. They could die. And it's over for everybody on that island and the world. And it's just like one of those, it's those moments where, like, all these adults on the island are looking at these children. And I just, like, I think that kind of, like, it reminds me again, like, this is a very anime thing where like the adults are looking at the children to save the day but it's because like i'm assuming most of these adults don't have quirks that would be helpful at all yeah but it's also because like the children have truly become the heroes even if they're temp heroes almost like heroes are rising right (laughs) right look at that look at how that title works in there um but yeah uh sorry i feel like i've babbled on about no, so, but, I, I mean, it's not babbling. It's really good. If you want to take us to when they, uh, to the next part in this. Oh, yeah. Story. So from where, like, it turns out that um, the cell activation quirk actually is very powerful. And, like, Deku is up and walking around. And he even says, like, he, so did we ever, I, I feel like I can't remember the little boy's name. I feel bad about this. But. He doesn't feel like his quirk is going to be able to make him a hero one day, which very touching that Deku and him bond because Mm -hmm. just like him who grew up without a quirk and didn't think he could be a hero. This little boy is doubting his ability to be a hero. He knows he can help people, but he doesn't think he can be a hero. But when Deku is up and walking around and he sees that he saves Deku 
and Deku lets him know like your quirk is amazing and you're like and he like reassures him that like your quirk saved me I think that was just like so cute and adorable and just a powerful moment um but like from there the next scene kind of like jumps into they've all come up with a plan and to separate the three villains and how they're gonna do everything and so we've already talked about the fight scenes with the other ones but now we get to Deku's and Bakugo's yes. fight scenes and y'all I just have so many feelings right now because there's a moment where you think like their whole strategy is they j- are just trying to hold out long enough and to the point where nine is exhausted and that means they can at least knock him out and they can like incapacitate him so mm-hmm. that's their ho- that's their whole thing they just want to hold out long enough either until the other heroes can get there and get their message or they can hold out long enough to get the villain knocked out and incapacitated so yep. huh and then this fight like they're doing combo moves they're working together they're using each other's quirks to their abilities like the when deku flies back and bakugo catches him spins around and launches him up forward to get an attack in. I, I, I scream. It's so good. It's so, it so, so good, girl. Like, it, I... Uh. <laughs> I there, so, there's this beauty in watching them work as a team because, like, mm-hmm. this is the first time we get to see them really put to the test, like, what All Might was telling them mm-hmm. during at the end of season three. Like, at this point... Like Bakugo has recognized Deku, like they're equal. Yes. They're they're teammates. They're people who at the end of the day, and it's something that everybody always forgets when they talk badly about Bakugo, which like he was a dick in the beginning, I know, but like he just wanted to be all might. Yeah. He just wanted to be All Might, and he just wants to be a good hero. And I think that that's something that gets lost with all of his aggression and his competitiveness. Mm -hmm. But there is goodness in there that hits the same way as Deku. They just have different ways of going about it. So seeing them get to fight, because, like, it's such a different kind of fight too, right? Because, like, when Deku was fighting Overhaul, it was like, no, I have to kill, like, I have to, I have to defeat Overhaul. When Deku was fighting all of his other villains, he had to defeat the villains. This one, they, like you said, they both know that they can't win. Like, they're going into this fight knowing that they can't win. But what Mm -hmm. they can do is make this man so tired that he has to stop. Right. And so it's like, the very nature of their plan means that they're going to get hit with so much stuff. Because in order for that guy to get tired, that he has to use all of his powers all of the time. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it's incredibly dangerous. But when they started working together, I was like, oh, my God, this is just what I want. These Mm -hmm. are my babies. Exactly. And it's just like, it's so, uh, it's just like, it's it's just like, you even get the flashback where it's All Might talking to them on that night where they had that fight. And he says it exactly where, like, if y'all could just work together, you bring out the best in each other. Like, I'm paraphrasing, but like, you bring out the best in each other. Yep. There it and it just reminds me so much of like Dragon Ball Super when Whis is talking to Goku and Vegeta and basically saying like if you each could learn something from one another and learn how to work together you would be unstoppable and you could achieve like you could both like exceed to the next level of power. Like I always think of like that and I always think of them as cuz it's like it's like for me that's like the blueprint for the shonen rival thing. And we've talked about how Deku and Bakugo and their shonen rivalry. I feel like it's this generation's Vegeta and Goku. I mean, yeah. to insert in, insert any yeah. old like old school shonen rival, but like to me, Deku and Bakugo does something special for the shonen rival trope. And I don't know how to quite phrase it. And I don't. And I think I, we talked about this a little bit. It's just like, is it because like they're kids and we're seeing them go through it as children and as they grow together and they're just pushing each other to the next level, instead of like them being grown men training hard and be, and punching each other to death, and then like there's a and then there's a hero that's and then there's like an ultimate winner, like I don't know what it is, and I I feel like I need to dissect it more. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to still like wrap my head around it. I just, it's like their, their rivalry does something is something special. It is. I, it, it I, I agree. Like their, their rivalry, it kind of redefines what a shonen rivalry is. Yes. Because that. when you look at somebody like Goku and Vegeta, like they exist to just themselves get more powerful. That's it. And that's, right. then that's what shonen rivalries have been defined as. Like, how can mm-hmm. I be more powerful from this person? And we will contis- we, we, we will consistently compete to be better than each other and make each other better in that way. But like, kind of like you said, like Goku or not Goku, Deku and Bakugo, they make each other better because they're, they're working to the same point. Right. They're not working for something else. Like they're not working for their own gain. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's for their own game in a way but it is very much the same position, which is like they both just want to be All Might, which I th- mm-hmm. again everybody forgets. And I think this film does it so well in splicing in moments from the season three finale, mm-hmm. um, not finale, but the, the end of the season three arc where they fight each other. They splice in moments from All Might talking to both of them. They they do such a really good job of showing All Might's teachings from the entire the entirety of the series and pulling it into one one movie. Mm-hmm. Um that I just feel for them. And their rivalry is taken to it's like a step above where Sasuke and Naruto are, a step above where Goku yeah. and Vegeta are. Like they they are the same. They are very much the same. And if you want to talk about the moment that makes them both the same, we can do that now. <sighs> yes, let's talk about that. So, again, Nine gets the boys back into quite the corner where it seems like all hope is lost. He is able to, like, just pin them down and he's about to steal the little boy's quirk from him. But there's something magical that happens in that moment because Deku... At the last minute, like, they hear the little boy call out to them, like, we still believe in you, I believe in you, and that snaps him out of it, and Deku has a realization, it's like, I have something crazy that'll work, and he tells, and they look at him and says, Kachan, I know what we have to do, and Bakugo, like, has this look on his face, which I feel like I've never seen this look on Bakugo's face, and he looks at him, and he, and they both know what he's talking about. Yeah. Like. He, know, he knows what he's talking about before he can even say it. And it's like, without words, Deku's like, I'm not enough to beat him. 100% full cow is not enough to beat him. But together, we can beat him. And he holds out his hand, which is covered in blood. And Bakugo, I'm assuming how the transfer works is because Bakugo has like an open scar or whatever. Yeah, so they show the, they, yeah, they show the open cut. Yeah, the open cut. So... And they touch, and he essentially is giving him all for, sorry, one for all. He passes on, just like how All Might gave Deku his quirk, Deku is giving his quirk to Bakugo. I was crying so hard. The tears! Like, because they have that moment, and when they put their fingers together, they end up just holding hands. Yes! And I was like, oh my god, my babies. I was just like, I'm crying for so many different reasons right now. It's because the whole thing with, like, this is Deku's quirk that was given to him by All Might, and he's like, he's come to realization that All Might can't be upset with him for giving his quirk to Bakugo, because he at least acknowledges Bakugo, and, like, if there was anyone else in the world... He would be okay with Bakugo having the quirk. Right? Like, that it was... Hurt. Ugh. <laughs> it just hurt so much to see it. But it was also, like, this beautiful moment that, like, for me, like, I was like, oh, my God. There is no way that this fandom can say that Bakugo doesn't deserve anything anymore. Because literally, Deku took what All Might told him in that third season and mm-hmm. applied it and was like... Yep. It, it was it was just beautiful. It's and so beautiful. It was Ugh. the and it was also the fact that Bakugo didn't want it like that. Yes. Like Bakugo didn't like if that was Vegeta and if that was Goku, the other people just want to get pa- stronger. They don't care how they do it. 
Right. But with this, Bakugo was like, no, like this, this is your power. And it was, and it was important mm-hmm. that he said your power to Deku because yes. the entire crux of their dynamic as rivalry is Bakugo not wanting to fight him again until Deku mm-hmm. has made that power his. Yes. And he and even so, says in the beginning, hurry mm-hmm. up and make that power your own. And this is him acknowledging it. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. Like it, it's it so is, beautiful. When it comes to character depth and character mm-hmm. growth, mm-hmm. especially in Shonen, I mm-hmm. can't name a better example of that than in My Hero. And I think I can't. continually they just one-up themselves and prove it over and over again. And mm-hmm. this was, this was one of those that really did it. It did it. It really, like, they knocked it out of the park. And it's just, like, on so many levels. And it's, like, in that moment, and then even Deku acknowledges this, and, and Bakugo asks him, like, so what does this mean? Will you still have your quirk? And he's just like, well, All Might was still able to be the symbol of peace, and he had the embers of it, of his power in him, but I'm passing mine on to you. So Deku acknowledges that he knows that he'll still he still has some power in him. But... Mm-hmm. It's that he doesn't know when it will go away. So he says, like, it could run out. Like, I could use all of it in this fight. I'm going to push myself. And they both agree to push themselves to the limit in this one fight, in this last fight. My in baby order... boy breaks his entire body in the same he way. He broke his does. arms. He broke both of his arms because, again, he don't know how to use his quirk. But uh, Deku already has one broken arm. But then, okay, so y'all, this is like... The transformation. Their hair is glowing. Their hair goes like it was a total DBZ callback. Like their yes. hair flies up, and it, it's just it's beautiful. And they're Ugh. and Deku is green, and Bakugo is orange, and they have this like it, it's beautiful to see them so defined as themselves, but then at the yes! same time working together because like mm-hmm. I there were just so many mo like I don't think. I have been that moved or that mm-hmm. on the edge of my seat. Yep. With an anime fight, like right, ever, like it's ever. just it. It hit me on a different level because I think this is again goes back to my point when I talked about it even like earlier this week. I think on Twitter about and hero and two heroes when you see Deku. And that it's a scene where Deku and All Might are working together and they're fighting with one another. You see glimpses of Deku finally making all, like, we're making one for all his own, but yeah. he's still trailing behind All Might. It's now, like, and that's really, for me, that hits on a different level because as we know, after that movie, All Might has his big battle and he's no longer, he, he's no longer the number one hero anymore. But it's also because. This is the moment that, in that last moment, that's the last moment Deku is behind All Might. Now yeah. he's moving forward, and he has grown into his own hero, and he's applied all like one for all to be his his power. So then, seeing this scene where Deku, it's not like Bakugo started pulling out how like he applied one for all to his quirk. And to his abilities, to what mm-hmm. works for him. The boy made magma. Oh my god. So this was my favorite. So yes. what I love about this fight scene mm-hmm. is that our boys continually get knocked the fuck down. Like yes. they keep getting knocked down and they keep getting back up. Mm-hmm. And Naku, they, they, they've made these big craters and mm-hmm. Bakugo gets just essentially just swatted into one. Mm-hmm. And his arms are broken and he can't climb out. He can't use them. And so what yep. does my baby do? He walks exactly. through the goddamn earth by making magma. He walks through the ground because yep. he won't stop fighting. Yes. He uses everything in him, everything from 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 uh one for all and everything mm-hmm. from his own his own his own quirk to yep. just do what he can to get back in the fight yep and again i say this i have held bakugo for like i've hold i've held him accountable for many things mainly for telling my baby to die 
Just yeah. say. It's Mainly a good telling, thing. It's a good thing to hold them accountable for. It's very I, bad. Yes, thank you. That is it. I've only held him accountable. I've never said I hate Bakugo. I've never said I, I call him a villain. I stand Bakugo. I'm just I'm saying this right now. This movie will make you a Bakugo stand. I've always loved this character. I'm not jumping on no bandwagon. I'm just making this very, very clear. Yeah. But like, if anything, this movie will make you a Bakugo stand. Yeah. I and I just like and because you cannot deny the boy's heart is not in being a hero and like how he pushes himself and I yeah. loved it. And it's like just seeing that scene, I'm just like, oh my god, don't die. Like I know. I was so scared. Uh, I was just like, it's so much going on. And then like my nephew over there, he just becoming lightning. He's just moving so fast. It become Deku's just basically a freaking piece of lightning bouncing around and doing all because he broke his, both of his arms earlier in the fight, um, as he does. But it's just just seeing the, how they're pushing themselves and not giving up and like to the limits of their they they could have died. Yep. In or and it's just like just seeing how they kept on pushing themselves and pushing themselves to like like you said Bakugo is literally working like walking through the earth and he's using his face to create magma. Um like it was it was one of those things where like I can't even tell like it, how do I explain it? Deku has set up such a high bar for being a hero. And mm-hmm. he's done that in every fight. The boy has used his cheek. Yep. Like, he's used every part of his body. And getting to see Bakugo be kind of held in that same standard. Because you're right, he uses his face. He secretes all of the nitroglycerin from his face. The boy is exploding his face. Yeah. To make yeah. this. Mm-hmm. To keep fighting and i just uh so one of the things that gets me is i think the reason this movie is so good is because this was supposed to be the end this was supposed to be the end of the series yes let's get into that because i have feelings if this would have been the end like for those of you who don't know i think it was when the first movie came out they announced the second one and then there was like talks of like there's not gonna be a bunch of movies they have plans to like maybe do only two of them if that but then yeah. this year we got announced that they're making 10 yep total so now we have two and we got eight more to go so yeah how would you wait. feel I, I know i can't wait but like how would you feel if this was actually the end i i would have been okay with it because i'm a bakugo fan mm-hmm and that's if, and that's if, but, like, okay, so in the end, so wait, so ho, pa, let's pause for a second. Yeah. Should we wrap up the movie and then yes, talk yes, about yes, yes, how yes, this yes, ends? Yes, 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 yes. Let's, let's wrap up the movie. Okay, so it ends, so Bakugo, Deku, they do the damn thing. They take out the villain because he's exhausted his power and they save the day. And it's like, and they are both knocked unconscious from the fight. And they're like, they beat that man so bad, the top half of his body is burnt and broken. And he, like, flies off somewhere away. And they do Detroit Smash together. 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 In perfect unison. In perfect unison, which I'm like, they both their arms are broken already. And it's just, uh, they it hurts my heart in a good way. So they win, they save the day. And they both are, like, passed out unconscious. Huh. Okay, so when Deku wakes up, he sees All Might holding him because the heroes finally made it to the island. They All the kids actually ended up stopping all the villains, so they're able to round up the ones that they caught. Uh, and the kids... The, ki- the, the, the kids are saved, they're relieved and everything, and the, and the heroes are there. All my toting Deku, and he's telling like, "Good job, great job you did, like you did it." And then like Deku starts crying in All Might's arms, and he's apologizing to him. Um, and he just he's so broken up, and he tells him like, "I had to give, uh, all for all for dang it, I'm gonna keep messing this up. <laughs> one, one for, for all. all. I had to give one for all to Bakugo, and he explains to him like, "I figured you wouldn't be mad." Um. 
and he's just like feels like he's just let him down so much and all my just like looks like is just like has this look on his face where he's like no you did your best and like he's kind of shocked and everything but then it's like Deku passes out again Deku's body starts glowing again and all might realizes he didn't lose all for one he actually has it still in him all for one the hero the hero the past heroes the the power itself allowed Deku to share all for one with Bakugo for this one instance in order for them to save the day so it, it it's not permanently gone it's just like it showed that he was able to share that power with him and, the, and, and it, it seems like when they like are, are the next day Bakugo has no memory at all that he had all for one. And it hurts. Was. It hurts. I'm so mad that yeah. they did that. I, I wanted to wish they hold didn't. It. Like I, I wish, wish they didn't. Like I like I get it. Like so, I know that like they did a good job of like putting the. And I said one for all. Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> I just realized it's one for all, y'all. I'm sorry. It's just so confusing sometimes. Sorry. Like I, it was one of those things where I was really excited. Because I I know that anime movies don't necessarily always get referenced or have really big canonical implications for mm-hmm. the series. But I wanted this to be different because that was a moment in their friendship mm-hmm. that I think solidified it. And so it hurts me for him not to remember. Right. And I think the only reason they... I, 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 I'm saying this because this movie had to be made a while ago. I don't know what was the decision here to like... Maybe they, if this was movies was meant to be the end, did they like change it after they made it already before yeah. it premiered in Japan? Like maybe it was meant for Bakugo to just take the to have the power yeah. and be the new holder of it. I don't know, but that would have been very interesting to explore. So then oh, that yeah. makes me think the whole Bakugo not remembering thing is meant because they don't want him, they don't want that to like feed over into the series because the even though like yeah the anime movies typically don't you know it's not canonical but my hero does reference their movies like i think in this last season they definitely referenced how all might went to america and they say the character's name like the his friend in america yeah uh, dave and they and they reference that part of his history so that's canon so then that makes me think like okay so certain things from the movies are canon or like, or all are the movies canon? But then that to me explains why they made it that Bakugo forgets that he w- that he used one for all. Because I feel like that's not gonna be a thing that they'll do again. Or if they do do it again, they will not want to do it in the series. Yeah, if that makes sense. I just like if, if the ability to share one for all is something i think that it's it's not meant to for them to like bleed over into the series yeah yeah no i agree i agree and i know why they did it i just but i get it (laughs) oh that being said so like i would have been really happy with the ending Mm -hmm. um uh, if it had ended without being open like with bakugo keeping the power but i do think that an ending like that would be awful for a lot of people who have not liked Bakugo. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically because it would mean that... I I feel like people would feel the same as I did when Mirio lost his power. Like, there's so much that Mirio needed to do. There's so much that, like, me, all Mirio wanted to do was be... All he wanted to do was save people. He hid so much and he was so talented and he was getting a right. hold of it and he was competitive. And then overall takes his power. And mm-hmm. I think that same like empty feeling and that sadness, I think I think that that is what would have been felt with this mm-hmm. instead of this like hopeful thing that that it ended on. So I, I do think that they couldn't have ended it that way. Mm-hmm. But. I agree. I, like, if this was the end, like, if we weren't getting any, if, like, if the series was over, I would be okay. 
with this. I mean, honestly, no, I wouldn't be okay. Um, I want this. I want this series to go on forever. I want to yeah. see them. I want us to have a, a five year skip after they're in high school, and I want to see them as adults. I, I really want, want that. I right. We deserve it. After all the five year skip anime that be coming out. I want, and I don't want them, I don't want them to be parents yet. I don't want their children. I don't want that. I don't I want, want their children. See, <laughs> I want to see them as adults in the world, doing their hero agency things. I want to see them having romances. I want, yes. I want to see them grow. Relationships. Adulthood. Being adults. Not children. We, we don't need them to be parents yet. I want to see them out in the world and being heroes and facing the struggles of being an adult hero. Because I feel like that's something to be said. And I and I think Aizawa should be the principal at that point. Yes, he really should be. He should. He needs to be the principal. Just somebody hear us. I know we're just like shouting into the ether right now. But <laughs> yeah, but it's just like one of those things where like I truly see this series going on for quite some time. And it's so, so good. And it deserves, like, we deserve to see these kids grow up into, like, the full-fledged heroes that they are going to become because we see that potential in them. And it's just so beautiful. But, like, man, if that had been the end, I think I'd be in tears. I really would have cried. Like, I'm telling y'all, I'm not allowing Kate to post that picture that I sent her <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I have my hair tied up and I look a mess. But I was, I was up and I was crying. <laughs> I was in my feelings. It's mm-hmm. just, it's it's just so, it's so good, but, oh. It was a yeah. lot. Um, it was a so... lot. So. Oh, wait, the last part of the ending. Yeah. So, if y'all are wondering what happened to Nine, uh, Sugar Rocky pops up, and. Dusts he, his ass. He, pretty much. He, Zan, he Thanos his ass. <laughs> Snap. Mm-hmm. Ooh, he, yeah, it's just like, he got rid of him real quick. So... Yeah, because they played a role a little bit in the beginning, and you got to see Dobby, not be Dobby, but it's Dobby. But yeah, so I it's a double. It's a double of Dobby. Yeah, it's a double of Dobby, which I was. Which like, I do. Th- so I think out of all the quirks on the show, this is probably for another thing. The way that doubling quirk gets used is the mm-hmm. most inconsistent thing in this goddamn show. And I oh, don't understand yeah. it. You want to know something that's really interesting, though? Ah. Uh. If he that I think he is probably the mo the most powerful one of the most powerful villains if he really applied his quirk yeah in a way because like it's terrifying when you think about it he can make a double of anybody and yeah. they have the same attributes and power and like I like how they explore that characters it's twice is the character's name but like I like how they explore like his whole dilemma with like him um like. The, the reason he wears a mask and everything and all that. But yeah. if he were to, like, if he weren't a sidekick, he could actually be, like, more threatening than, honestly, All for One. In my, this is just me thinking, because essentially All for One is just powerful because he has all these quirks. But Twice can create doubles of people with quirks. Uh-huh. That obey him. So, just saying, I'm just gonna leave that there. This isn't this isn't a villain episode, but but we should do th- one. And yes. you all didn't know that this is us becoming a My Hero Academia podcast. Yes, in this, <laughs> in this house we stand My Hero Academia, and we will uh-huh. talk about everything because there's so much to talk about. Literally everything. We can do a best girl episode. We can do a best boy episode. We'll do a villain episode. An Aizawa episode. We're gonna oh, be gonna, doing can... a Bakugo episode right here oh. in a minute. Yep. A Bakugo episode is coming y'all way next. So. Anywho. Yeah. Sorry. I think that's. So with that. Does that close? Did we talk that's about That's it. I think, I think we got everything. I think we got everything. I definitely want to hear what everybody else thinks. Yeah. So. I'm interested to see. I'm very, I'm very excited for y'all to go see it. Like definitely go see this in a movie theater. Like. It is worth going out to see it. And I say this as someone who's like, whenever an anime movie comes out, I have to drive two towns over to get to the theater that yeah. plays it. It is worth that trip to that it movie is. theater. It 100% it. is. Mm-hmm. But. Okay. <laughs> I guess, that, do you want to give your rating? Do we have, do we, do we give it ratings? 
Yeah, let's do ratings. I feel like we should still do it for this one. Um, I'm going to give it a 12 on a scale of 1 to 10. Yep. Just it's, it, it exceeded my expectations in yeah. every way. So it, it was a 12. It went beyond. Plus ultra, yeah. if you will. Oh would. my God, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that this, uh, I do saw, I, I mean... Of the newer anime movies that came out, I don't think End of Evangelion will ever be touched because I think that that's the best anime movie ever. Mm -hmm. But I do think that this is probably the best anime movie that's come out that's directly related to a show in at least the last 10 years. It is the best anime movie of the decade. I will give you that because we are in a new decade and I can say that. (laughs) I can say that right now. Yeah. I loved it. And I, ho- I hope everybody mm-hmm. listening loved it. Tell us what you thought. Tell us what your favorite moments were. Like, get involved with us on our Twitter. Mm-hmm. At us. Tell us things. Um, yeah. I guess. Uh, and you can do that by following us and interacting with us on at D-Y-H-T underscore pod. And mm-hmm. you can find me on Twitter at oh my Myth Randier, where I will finally – be raving and yelling and ranting about My Hero Academia Heroes Rising because I have been waiting to do it since I got that damn screener. Mm-hmm. And yes, I will also be joining Kate in the raving and the ranting at LA underscore NEY underscore SHA. Just, yeah, y'all hit us up. Like, tag the mm-hmm. show and tag us and then we will talk about it with y'all. Also, I will say, between Dragon Ball Super Broly last year and My Hero this year, Funimation is knocking this shit out of the park. They really are. I just, like, I stand. Because mm-hmm. I thought, I, I think I said it when I watched Dragon Ball Super Broly, I was just like, how? Like, you really exceeded my expectations for a Dragon Ball movie. And it's just like, animation, story, plot, character development everything and then they do this one i'm like how dare you exceed my expectations to this point where i'm crying (laughs) just yep they are y'all are killing it over there funimation yep anyway anywho Mm mm-hmm anywho uh with that am i are we ready to close out yes okay will we ever see deku share one for all with bakugo again how would y'all have felt if this was the end of My Hero Academia? And how do we feel about Bakugo being able to wield one for all? Find out next time on Did You Have To. Bye. Bye. Bye.